Number one is to fight infections. Ginger is good at help ridding your body of various germs and bacteria, which can aid in quicker recovery or even prevention. Number two, a healthy mouth. Who doesn't want a cleaner and brighter smile? Gingerol is an active compound that fights oral bacteria and keeps them from overgrowth. It helps to ward off serious gum disease issues. Number three is eases nausea and motion sickness. One of the worst feelings in the world, many might say, can be eased by ginger's active compounds that can reach deep into the GI tract. Number four, reduce cancer risk. Ginger has been shown in some studies to slow down the growth rate of some cancers. Number five is pain. Ginger can help with pain in various forms, such as sore muscles, menstrual cramps, arthritis, etc. To understand this a little better, let's listen to Dr. Michael Greger explain. The eight randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials of ginger for pain, everything from osteoarthritis to irritable bowel to painful periods. I've made videos about all those, as well as uh, its use for migraine headaches. Overall, ginger extracts, like the powdered ginger spice you'd get at any grocery store, were found to be clinically effective pain-reducing agents with a better safety profile than the drugs. In some of the studies, the ginger worked better than in others, which is thought to be due in part to the different doses that were used. Uh, there's a strong dose-effect relationship. The best results in terms of reduction of pain were 1.5 to 2 grams a day, which is a full teaspoon of ground ginger. The drugs work by suppressing an enzyme in the body called cyclooxygenase 2, which triggers inflammation. The problem is that the drugs also suppress cyclooxygenase 1, which does good things, like protect the lining of your stomach and intestines. So since the inhibition of COX-1 is associated with gastrointestinal irritation, if only we could selectively inhibit the inflammatory one. That would offer kind of the best of both worlds, and that's what ginger seems to do. Here's the effect of two ginger compounds against cyclooxygenase 1, the good one. No effect, but can dramatically cut down on the pro-inflammatory one. OK, but does it work for muscle pain? Not acutely. You can't just take it like a drug. If you give uh, folks a teaspoon of ginger before a bout of cycling, no difference in leg muscle pain over the, the 30 minutes. However, ginger may attenuate the day-to-day -day progression of muscle pain. Uh, taking ginger five days in a row appears to accelerate the recovery of maximal strength uh, following a high-load weightlifting protocol. Uh, put all the studies together, and a single dose of ginger doesn't appear to help, but a teaspoon or two for a couple days or weeks in a pumpkin smoothie or something, and you may be able to reduce muscle pain and soreness and accelerate recovery of muscular strength. Is fresh ginger preferable to powdered? Maybe not. There's all sorts of compounds in ginger with creative names like gingerols and gingerdiols and gingerdiones, uh, but the most potent anti-inflammatory component may be a compound called shojil. And interestingly, dried ginger contains more than fresh, uh, justifying the medicinal uses of powdered ginger for illnesses due to oxidative stress and inflammation. Why not then just give the extracted shojil component in a pill by itself? Each of the active ginger components individually reduce inflammation, some more than others, but the whole ginger is greater than the sum of its parts.